Hello there, welcome back to Paranormal Side. Last, last episode, we um we are finished with we got we are finished with Sogo OK's branch. So now we are going to hop into these three characters, particularly Yaku Sakazaki and Tetsuo Shishumi. Now there's no set order for do, doing this, but it's actually. It's actually best if you do it from bottom to top uh, for this, at least for this part of the game which is why I'm doing it this way in, well, in terms of completionist Of course, I'll also show some, some stuff you can do to get to get any achievement that you might have screwed yourself out of if you do it up out of the order that I gave you so don't worry if you messed up at some point because it it's easy to fix it. Okay, so let's get right back into it. After Yako acquires the curse of the fool's possession, Mio tries to persuade her to give up on going after the flight of resurrection. The effects of other curse echoes are already appearing at the school, so the two hurry to get out of the classroom. Okay. Uh, Oh, and before I start the stream, I oh, okay. Let's start. But before I start playing it, I also want to give a quick update to my schedule. Um, for if you look at my at what at the schedule I have on on my Twitch Twitch channel, you you'll see that I changed it around so that you that all paranormal side videos are coming out on specific days at as well as with the Plant vs Zombie stream. So that this way it has a bit more consistency in terms of what I'm playing. Now now I am going to uh, switch around the timing a bit for uh, Sunday's paranormal uh, which is today's paranormal side stream since I think I won't be able to play it in the morning like the other like my other streams and will most likely play it at this time. So yeah. And in terms of, of progress on my Chucky Gaiden video in my main channel, uh, there is no progress. <laughs> okay, so and with that out of the way, let's continue on with the game. Hey, Mio, what was that just now? Could it be another curse echo different from mine? I think so, yes. It may have been discovered by another curse bearer. Oh. Hmm? What's wrong? Someone's there, in that classroom. What? Someone, something moved inside. Well... We don't need to check it out, right? Let's hurry it and get out of here. Maybe... The person who used that curse echo may be in there. If we could just see who it is, it could help us later. Right, just a glimpse. Be careful. Well, can you see anything? Try and get a look around. Nothing mm, on this side. No. Oh. Ah! Huh? Is that our homeroom teacher, Mr. Jono Jonochi? And the person with him is, he told me from Class A. What? Oh my, w w what's going on here? Ah! That bastard! He's at it again! I have to kill him! I won't let him get away with this. What? The curse! I could kill him with it! No, Yako! You can't use the curse though! What's gonna do to you? Resist him! Who, who's there? Is someone there? This 
This is bad. We have to go before they see us. This is too interesting. Oh, no, listen. It is interesting, but I, but you guys can read it on on your own. You know, it's, it just has no bearing on the current game. <sighs> it seems like they're not coming after us. Let's hope they didn't see our faces. But Yako, what came over you all of a sudden? <sighs> Sorry, thanks for stopping me. It's like this uncontrollable rage suddenly welled up inside me. I wonder what's ha gotten into me. I can barely even remember what happened. I'm really sorry. I do think it's partly the curse's influence on you, but we certainly saw something shocking. My heart's still pounding. I'm a little surprised how you know Hitomi from Class A. She tends to stand out a lot. Gotcha. Well, she certainly does dress like a delinquent, though she barely shows up to school. But Mr. Jonochi but Mr. Jonochi or Hitomi, but could Mr. Jonochi or Hitomi really be a curse bearer? <laughs> okay, okay, that's kind of sorry of it. I don't know, but we should be careful just in case. Yako? Hmm? When I give the si signal, run. Go straight for the entrance. Don't look back, no matter what. Huh? Why? Did something happen? Something happened, didn't it? What about you, Mio? I'll be fine. We'll meet up outside, outside the school gates. We are not there in 10 minutes. Go straight home, okay? Okay, go! Uh, right! Don't look back, don't look back. Huh, huh. I have to get outside. Let's see, to get to the gate, I go by the gym and... Let's see, uh... Huh? What are you doing, miss? Eh? Uh, Alright, what voice did I want to give this guy? Um... You shouldn't be... You shouldn't be here this late. Don't you know what time it is? Oh, Mr. Asimiya! Well, if it isn't little Yako. Anyways, students ain't supposed to be outside playing around at, na at night. Okay, okay Ma Makoto is the janitor at Tomagata High School. His predecessor was nearing retirement, so he began working as his replacement about six months ago. Let's see here. Okay. I know you're rough around the edges, but I didn't take you for one to act out like this. Sorry, I forgot something back in the classroom. Huh? No sass today, huh? Realize you, you were in the wrong, did ya? Yes. Forgot something in your, your classroom, huh? Your, your piece of work. Huh? But you don't have nothing on it with you. Oh, wait, you do. What's that in your hand? Huh? Well, um, this is what I forgot. I, uh, got it for my grandpa. It's really important to me. <laughs> Ghosts these days still have weird taste. Well, okay. Better head straight home if you're done. I, I would tell on ya. No, wait. I can't let you walk home alone this late. Alright, wait just a little. I'll hurry and lock things up. Ah, but... Alright. Um, actually, a friend of mine is still inside. I think they'll be here soon. That's so. Who's your friend? Um, my classmate, Ryoko Suzu. Ah, the transfer student. Rated school rules already, huh? Didn't take her for the type. No, I was the one who dragged her here. Well, whatever. I'll go take a look. It'll be safer if you go home together. Oh, right. She's in the first 
She's in the first floor, always. Be careful, though. You don't know what might be, be there. What is that supposed to be? First floor, floor, yeah? I'll be right back. Late. I've, I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. I'm starting to get worried. I'm going to take a look. Mio, are you there? wrong this time. Uh, it's my fault. It's all my fault. I left her alone with a curse bearer. Neo. I'm sorry. I threw this. Ah. My mind, Anto, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. Also, it looks like you're going to have to change your plans a bit. But this was bound to happen. There is someone who must not be trusted. Once you have an idea of who it is, be sure to come back. <laughs> ah, sorry, there's something in my throat. <coughs> I'm sure you'll see what you need to do differently. It is a difficult judgment for Yako Sakazaki to make, you see. The chapter will remain incomplete for now. I recommend you try another route. Now then, until next time. Okay, so... Uh, you can ignore what I said at the beginning of the stream, man. Oh, uh, you, you are going to want to start with Hawaii Sigma then. Actually, this is what I started with when I first played the game, so... Yeah, I actually didn't know that would happen. Okay, let's, so let, let's just begin this. When the son of Harvey Sigma was kidnapped, a boss investigation by the police resulted in a child's murder. One year later, Harvey has hired a private investigator to help resolve the unsettled case. Late at night, while speaking to the detective at her home, something strange suddenly, ha suddenly appears. So this is what she has. Kills when burning someone with employs of possession or fire or fire starting the device. It, yeah, this is what she had when when we were playing as solo. Yeah, Her murderous impulse sneaks into my soul like a thick black cotton car. Okay, now I have to try to recall what the voice I gave him was. Let's see. Um, uh, 
Okay, I do recall it. Um, Back with me, ma'am. Can't say I understand what what just happened, but it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. Sweet dreams. How old is a housewife who resides in a band near Sumoku Bridge? Her, her 11 year old son, Suiji, was kidnapped and murdered about a year ago. The death was the result of a mistake on the part of the detective assigned to the case. A mistake which enraged the kidnapper and, and had him cut off all contact with the police, leaving no room for negotiation. The incident was covered up and Suiji's killer remains at large, leading the grief. Harvey to call on the services of private investigator Victor Kai to uncover the truth. Okay, there we go. No, not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. You know, <laughs> the first time I saw this, I kept thinking of the one Trafalgar law, law pick. You know, the one the one where he's sitting down. <laughs> oh, dear. <yeah. laughs> um, hey, Victor, can you get much higher? What, what does that even mean? Uh, nothing. Oh, don't you want to look at this? Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness. You made me, try, made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker my son got from somewhere or other. He put it up just before. Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Let me take a closer look. I knew it! It's head Hensel from way back in set one. This is a real collector's item. Excuse me. Don't tell me you've never heard of the Mockingbirds. Uh, what? They're the hottest new craze. Cute, cute little birds dressed like up like rough and tumble delinquents. Okay, I think I should probably edit his voice a bit. But, hmm, it's not not really satisfied with it. In fact, even in my first playthrough, I could settle on a voice for him. Yeah, I'll just keep playing it by ear until I come up with something that I can get into. I've never heard of them, but this certainly seems to matter to you. The best part is, nobody knows who made them. They just started showing up around town, and soon enough they won, won over everybody's heart. The story goes that they're made by some anonymous artist who covertly leaves them behind in specific locations. No one knows when or where they'll show up next. They're basically an urban legend of sort. Do you think one would turn up here of all places? This is a good sign. I'm sure of it. Oh, well, that's nice. So, this is going to be the collectibles for this game. I'm going to show off where you can find all of these. So, this is the first one. And I'm pretty sure it's required for you to view it. Yeah, you have to view everything in this room to progress. The lights. The chandelier is the only thing in, the, in here that's my choice. It's my favorite part of the room. A stereo unit with separated speakers designed for home, road, home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. The swinging of the pendulum echoes through the room. It feels livelier than usual with Victor here. Usually, it says to me. A fax machine. It can send images to other places along the telephone network. 
I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely find a use for it. The telephone. This mansion has a private line. The guest table. I don't know where father got this old thing from, but I've never liked it. A color television. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the latest models, there is no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at it as a family. But with father and my husband being away so often, it quickly fell into disuse. Let's see. Oh, wait. An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here since before I was born. An arrangement of flowers. You bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the flowers are called. A private investigator I hired. A friend told me about him. They say he's not very well known, but he's good at what he does. When I first visited his office in Ota City and saw how he was dressed, I could hardly believe he was a detective. But after talking to him for a while, I changed my mind. He says some strange things at times, but he seems like the reliable sort. Okay, then. okay, maybe I'll use this as practice for his voice. The eccentric man that Sogoki ran into at Ho Honji Bridge. Victor is actually a private investigator with an office in Ota City, Tokyo. After taking on a request from Harway Shijima to investigate the unsolved kidnapping and murder of her son, he gets caught up in the events surrounding the rite of resurrection. Once a police officer, Victor was wrecked with guilt over the police's inability to help all those in need, and quit the force to start his own private investigation firm. However, his heart, soft-hearted nature leads him to take on too many cases, and he has put his office in dire financial straits. How he st is still in business is a mystery, with some whispering that a wealthy patron is keeping him afloat. Victor studied alongside Detective June Ariel in the in the police academy. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. That should be all the important stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sorry you heard that. That was my father. Let me, let me bring you up to speed. We were in the middle of a chat when you suddenly started spacing you out. And the whole time you were grinning to yourself like you just won the lottery. Can you tell me what that was all about? Well, when to start? Hmm, interesting, very interesting. So the haunting clapper's curse echo appeared out of nowhere. Told you how to perform the vital resurrection, and gave you the curse you'll need to do it. Have I got that right? That's right. So it's all real. Honestly, I still could find it hard to believe. But I guess I have to now. I saw that curse stone appear in your hand myself. It looked like it popped clean out of thin air. With evidence that clear, there's no denying that there's some supernatural force at work. I don't think you quite understand. Oh? This isn't about evidence, and it isn't about belief. It's more than that. I know it's real. The moment the curse appeared, I knew everything before it even said a word. It was already there in my head, as clear as day. You just knew, huh? It was etched onto my soul, along with the curse's echoes, resentful memories. 
so I can feel it and it was like time like they did hundreds of years ago weave in flame rising in pain as my flesh blackens and my blood boils I can feel it all the agony all the rage it fills me with bloodlust I think I need to kill someone anyone will do just as long as they're carrying fire I see, that could be a problem. You think so? From what I know of you, I'm sure you'd see it as an opportunity. The stronger the desire to kill someone, the stronger the urge to kill. That's how it seems to me, at least, anyway. Good grief, talk about the spanner in the works. I say we take stock for a moment, remind ourselves where we've come from and where we're going. That might be a good idea. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. Wait, wait, sorry. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. To look into your son's kidnapping last year. To uncover the proof behind the abduction and murder of Shuichi Shigema. Oh yes, I remember. They never did find the one who did it. That's what I'm here about today, in fact. Kind of for you to let me drop by so late, by the way. I've been turning over every last stone and I've come up with a grand total of... One lead. So you say... As far as the police are concerned, it's a cold case. But I've managed to make some headway. I remember, you were just about to tell me. A kidnapping and murder case that took place in Hanzo Sumida around one year ago. Haori Sigima's son, Suichi, age 11, was kidnapped on his way from home from school, with a ransom being demanded that same evening. Initially, the kidnapping was thought of as a simple extortion scheme, but when it came to light that the Sigma family was closely tied to the police, and, and Suichi was in fact the grandson of a senior office official, it was quickly assumed that the perpetrator was acting upon a grudge against the police force. The kidnapping was treated as a direct attack against the good name of the police, and a large-scale investigation was launched that used the best equipment available to trace phone calls. This made it all the more embarrassing when they were unable to catch the culprit. Losing the public's confidence, the culprit grew talking. Oh, okay, that was my father. Like, he sneezes really loud. Actually, I got that from him, anyways. Oh, damn it. You guys can actually hear my parents arguing. The culprit grew cocky, relentlessly mocking the police force. After three days of failure after failure, Harway reached a breaking point. Spurred by concern for her son, she resolved to hand over the ransom money as fast as possible, but her husband and father, her husband and father who held the prestige of the police in high regard, refused, saying that they would not let the criminal win by giving into their demands. The increasingly frantic detective assigned the case lost his temper when the criminal called to to an ultimatum.
Okay, you said that's an opportunity to give myself a water break. Now then, let's let's continue on. Let's see, Suichi Shikima. The only son of Hawe Shikima, he was kidnapped and murdered one year ago. His body was discovered floating in the Shibita River. Let's see, okay. Which one should I talk about? Okay, that's out of you. You know, we, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what, why don't I tell you what I found and then we can make a decision. Alright. I suppose there's not much point going over the kidnapping itself. No, I'm very familiar. Then I'll leave that for the files to cover and just confirm a few things about the case. The police traced the culprit's calls back to, let's see here, Northern Oyoko River here in Sumida City. That's quite a wide, wide area. That's right. In the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from. But it was almost certainly the same location that Suichi was being held captive since Suichi's voice could be heard during the killer's calls. Northern Oyoko River is quite a distance from Suichi's normal school commute, factoring in that he was seen at school back but went, went missing before he arrived at his house. It's likely that he was abducted by car on his way home, on his route home. Maybe, maybe, but... Exactly, Suichi was a clever boy. He never would have gotten into a car with a stranger. That's right. I was very firm about that. I know he understood, too. I even saw him warning the other children. It's possible that they forced him into the car. The only issue there is, there weren't any witnesses to the kidnapping. You can't bundle someone into a car with that many students and... You can't bundle someone into a car with that many students around and not be noticed. But nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. So did they target him at some other time or somewhere away from his usual route? But for those seem a little far-fetched. Which raises the question, how did the kidnap will pull it off? The police never managed to find an answer. In the end, they decided that the kidnapper must just have gotten lucky. Well, why not set the problem on its head? The kidnapper managed to convince Suichi to get into their car, but how? The only thing that makes sense to me. Is if there was somebody that he would have a reason to trust. Okay, let me check something. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that my laptop was plugged in. And yeah, something on the laptop. A teacher, perhaps, or a relative, or somebody else that he knew. All of the t adults who each knew had alibis. The police checked them all thoroughly. They did, huh? No one throws numbers at a problem like the cops. But what if it wasn't someone he knew, or rather? Or if the culprit disguised themselves as a police officer. That would explain why he didn't find them suspicious. The Sigima family has close ties with the police after all. He would have had no reason to trust them. You might be right. But surely, that couldn't have. Well, there's a problem with that theory. You'd be surprised how much police officers stand out. That's just sort of the point after all. They are meant to be a visible deterrent against crime. 
Okay, I don't like having to click him every time. <laughs> like, can't they just start us off with this man? But here's another interesting little bit of trivia I happen to know. When you ask people to imagine someone's suspicious, nobody pictures women or children. Even kids who've been warned about stranger danger, sub often subconsciously expect the danger to look like an adult man. Besides, Suichi was the sort of boy who wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. He must have had a very strong sense of right and wrong. That's right. Wait, surely you can't mean. Now you're getting it. If, say, a young woman approached Suichi asking for help, what would he have done? If someone like that said they were lost and asked him for directions, would he have gotten into a car? He... Might have. My husband always told him that a man had a duty to watch out for women and children. You could certainly argue that kind of attitude is outdated that outdated nowadays, but if Suichi believed it, then we might have something here. Then you think the culprit was a young woman. But it was a man's voice on the phone. She might have been an accomplice or Maybe she didn't even realize it was being used. If anything, that would explain why she hasn't come forward. She herself might not realize she had anything to do with the case. So the question is, did anybody else see Suichi speaking with a young woman on the day of his disappearance? See what I mean? Said for about people's biases, that goes for witnesses too. And I figured that maybe, if I started asking you questions, I might get some new answers. So I spent my day asking about Suichi's school about, seeing if anyone has seen something. And one man thought he had. Do you mean, he saw it happening? Well, I can't say that yet, for sure yet. Turned out he wanted something from me, so he asked if we could talk in private. Alright, yes you do. There's no one around, we can speak in confidence. Um, excuse me, what is your name again? Chenouchi. Well, you got it. Well, Chenouchi, I'm all ears. Yes, so we are, Chi Page. You are a private detective investigating Suji Hidima's kidnapping, do I have that right? Of course, what else do I look like? As I know what a private detective looks like. No, forget it. Look, I'll tell you straight. My life is in danger. I need your help. So you'll excuse me if that caught me a little off guard. Let me ask you straight. Who is trying to kill you? A student called Michio Shimaichi. Interesting. A schoolgirl, eh? Sounds like you've been naughty. It's nothing like that. It's that girl. She's a murderer. I'm the only one who knows what I saw what she did. Michioshi Aishi, I saw her kidnap Suichi Shikima. Come again. I saw her talk to him on the street and beat him away. I didn't think much of it at the time, but then he went missing. She murdered him. I'm sure of it. Or at least, she got something to do with it. That's what they're here for, isn't it? Then you can't let her get to me. If that's true, you've been sitting on some valuable information. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, you see. If you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe you. I could. She told me she killed me if I spoke a word. You're telling me your school girl had you scared for your life. So you've been sitting on that all this time. And now, and you think she's coming for you now that you've spilled the beans. Yes, that's it exactly. I'm begging you, don't let her get me. Unless, uh, I'm telling you, she's a demon. Well, you seem to believe what you're saying. It just doesn't add up. How could a schoolgirl have a fully good man so terrified? You don't know what she can do. She'll, she'll curse me. Curse you? I'm sorry, but you're losing me here. 
it is true, how is it? Ah, forget it, why did I even bother? You seem to be enough to believe me, but I just have no you never understand. Enough, I'll find someone else to help me. Hey. Ugh. Yeah, that's about the longest sort of it. I can hardly believe it. At the time, I thought his mention of curses was just crazy talk, but I was like to see that there might have been more to it. Then, if we can just find that girl. Curse or no curse, it's your situation on the day of the kidnapping. Then there's a good chance she knows something. On top of that, I did some digging on the man I spoke to. His full name is Kohei Gojonochi. He's a teacher at Komagata High School here in Sumida. A teacher, then, this school girl is one of his students? I think that's very likely. At last we've got a lead. Hopefully it'll be the breakthrough we're looking for. The Rite of Resurrection, huh. I read about it in an Orcon magazine the other day. Apparently some old book showed up recently with all the gory details. And they say that the right can be found somewhere in Honjo. I remember the first time you told me about that. It felt like... Like my prayers had been not heard. Like I had hope. Real hope. For the first time. Ever since that awful day, I've wondered... What if I hadn't sent him to school? What if I just paid the ransom? Other days goes by when I don't think that if I'd done something differently, Suichi would still be alive. You can't blame yourself, ma'am. It was the culprit's fault, not yours. So I know that won't help any. Grief is funny like that. I'm guessing that's why you're after the right. Yes, I didn't need to ask, it's all written all over your face. I can tell how much he meant to you. And, but, and this is a big but. If this right is the real deal, using it will mean killing someone and stealing their soul. Is that a problem? If it comes to that, I'm, s I'm afraid I'll have to stop you. Well, that's the same. The same. That's all. Yeah, I thought, if I'm going to be competing with other curse bearers, then your detective skills might come in useful. You realize you're talking about ending someone's life, right? Did you see an issue with that? Okay, this is, uh, I'm not, okay, I know this is uh, it kind of distract from what I say, but I really like Howie's hair. Like, it looks really, it looks really nice. I like, <laughs> it's just, like, it's just brush strokes, but it makes it look really cool. Like, I, like, I, uh, like, you know when you use this in Vagabond, and it looks good here as well. Oh, I, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but if that, the artwork seems familiar, it's actually because it, it was done by the same guy who did the character designs for The World Ends With You. So if you recognize it, then, yeah, yeah, that's why. I think any parent in my position would happily kill for a charge like this. And so, is it? Dear, oh dear, what have I gotten myself into? If it makes you uncomfortable, then you won't have to get any blood on your hands yourself. I don't need you to kill the other curse bearers, I only need you to find them. <laughs> I don't think it's raining Okay. I thought it was raining. I mean, it was just my imagination. I would be a party to murder, ma'am. Not even for a client. I see. I didn't realize you were so stubborn. Let me say though, it's not like I don't, don't get what you're going through. As long as you're not killing anyone with your own hands, maybe I can help you out. What do you have in mind? Well, 
how about stealing someone else's custom after they filled it with stone flags? If I was all you were after, I, then I could lend you my services, guilt free. If the other curse bearers want to kill each other, that's their business. I'm not trying to be a hero here. I guess there's no guarantee a stolen curse stone will work, but we can worry about that later. Well then, I suppose we have a deal. Although, if I stole the curse stone using my curse, would you disapprove? I will void our contract, ma'am. Just warning you now. My. Before we go any further, why don't you tell me about that curse of yours? The Haunted Clappers, was it? That's one of the seven mysteries of Honcho, if I remember correctly. That's right. The original story did happen somewhere near here, I think. I'm sure I remember hearing that. In that case, I, my money would be to be on all the curse bearers in somewhere in Honcho. Our first move should be to narrow them down. Some of them are bound to try and come for you first. We'll need to be ready. The curses make the bearers more willing to kill, so an attack could come from anywhere. That sounds sensible. And if I remember correctly, your haunted clappers can set people on fire. But only if they have a naked flame or a lighter on their person. Is that right? That's right. In olden times, wooden clappers were used to warn people of fire. I'm guessing it punishes those who don't hate the warning. It seems like a good curse to have. It's straight simple and straightforward enough to use. Though, although it's hard to say how it stacks up without knowing what else is on the table. You really think it's that good? The target can't do much to throw it off, and it's a nice long activation window. It's big that it works on lighters too, just slip one into your target's pocket. And say the conditions were already fulfilled before they even knew you were there, they wouldn't even know what hit them. Maybe I would act have to actually use it. I could just tell someone I could, and they'd have to do what I said. This could work, although without any proof, it will come down to how convincing you can be. If only you could use a curse, then back out at the last second. At the last second. You know, I just had a weird thought. <laughs> I don't know why, but she reminds me of Asham Itaka from Chainsaw Man. <laughs> like, now that I think about it. Like an adult Asha. <laughs> And I can't even explain why. <laughs> maybe it's the look, like, maybe it's how they act, but <laughs> she just feels like an adult Asa. What an interesting idea. I have a lighter right now. We could try it out. That's an interesting proposition. But maybe not. I'm not quite crazy enough to make myself a guinea pig. Oh, I see. You're an odd one, ma'am, if you don't mind me saying, and I don't think it's just a curse. You flatterer. As for what we do next, first of all, I think you should stay indoors. Try not to do anything spontaneous or outside of your normal routine. Right then, have you decided what you want me working on? Well, I, well, I invited you here first to investigate this, so, yeah. Finally, finally, I have a lead. I need to know what happened to my son. Your wish is my command, ma'am. I'll focus all my efforts on looking into the kidnapping. Although, something just occurred to me. You can't investigate the matter at night, can you? At least, until the sun rises, could you search for the other curse bearers? <laughs> alright, I see how it is. Well, I'd be happy to help. Well, it's a good that the other curse bearers are also working by night. Anyone to kill under the cover of darkness will be discovered until sunrise. I bet they'll be trying to do as much as they can before the morning comes. So it's settled then. I'll look into the other curse bearers by night. Once the city wakes up, and I can start asking questions, I'll investigate the kidnapping as well. 
or even try to fight with the CYEC as part of our bargain. Thank you, that's more than enough. Now then. I should get to work. There's only so much time before sunrise. I'll call you if I find out anything new. You stay here and keep a lookout. Alright. There's no telling what kind of curses you might find out on the streets tonight. Don't go outside if you can help it, and try to be ready for anything. I will. Well, if that's all, I should be going. First stop. Okay, so... This is where... How it goes. We don't have anyone paint the curse of the haunting clappers, Howie Sigima is determined to use the light of resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. She instructs her private investigator Victor to find the other curse powers. It's been almost an hour since Victor left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened. But he hasn't. So all I can do is wait and wait. I know it's dangerous to go on. I just realized I forgot this thing throughout the, the whole thing last time. I can't just sit here and let this opportunity pass me by. Well, I have to look for her, for Michio Shiraichi. But first, I need to find more soul drags. That old hanging scroll. I see it too often to feel anything from it now. The flowers put me at ease, just a little. Should I put a record on? No, it's too late to take for that. I'm not in the mood for music anyway. Okay. There's nothing on at this hour. I see no point in turning it on. Come to think of it, I never offered him any tea. Not that I ever learned how to make it. I'm waiting for Victor to contact me, but he hasn't. <laughs> it's a fax machine. I really find it use for it. I don't know anyone else who owns one. My husband used to complain that it was dark, but I rather like the blue. Honestly, like, even without the dead sun thing, she's really damn emo. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't mentioned it yet, but this actually is my favorite route out of any out of the three, uh, which is uh, Huawei and Victor's route. It's just really, really fun. You, you get and intriguing. You get to see more of it as it goes on. What's this? A newspaper. It must have fallen off the chair. It's a newspaper. I only leave them in here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. Well, it's not like I have anything better to do. It looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. And yeah, see, what she's saying is true. It, it, because Honjo is actually a real place and it was really damp, damp polluted in the past. The river was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste, and it stank so badly it made my eyes of water. Eventually, people started getting sick and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten better since then. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. If that's one thing Honjo never wants for, it's horrific crimes. We found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. All of my family are in the police. I hope it wasn't anyone but I do. I don't read the news anymore, not since last year. It brings back bad memories. 
she decided that local high school, oh, I remember that, a high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. She was bullied, I think. Or maybe it was something about exam pressures. Huh? What? But... No, this can't be right. Her name... Michio Shiraishi from Komakata High School. It can't be. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, are moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220 to 230 yen to the dollar. No, to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar is down from its height and people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past few years. It's common to own a car and television now, and the supermarkets are better stocked than ever. Although with everyone flocking to the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of home ownership. The city said there's going to be nothing but apartments before long. Hmm. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this all feels like another world to me. Now that everyone has more spending money to go around, people are coming up with all kinds of new diversions. It seems like only yesterday that people were talking to their cage to shoot aliens. But now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Everyone's talking about the superhero series, foreign films, and movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music was all the rage. But now it's all about city pop and idols. Oh yeah, and if you can't tell, this is a boomer. <laughs> I find it hard to care about that sort of thing, thing anymore. Hi, that's Bo Booba of Sun Mitaka. Uh, uh, that's hilarious. As you know, she, she can't be an adult Asa because that implies Asa had sex and she still wants him to have sex. To have sex. Uh, I hear the new thing is some mascot line of liquid birds. Mocking birds, I think it's called. Was that what Victor was talking about? Men seem to have such soft self lines now. How quickly the types are changing. I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading their way. Those are more than world fields. My generation will only fall further behind. Everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. This country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is the backbone for books. Education is the backbone for modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to go get into a good university. The more people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce though. The new generation is rebelling if going out violence and delinquency are on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. I don't want to eat any more, I don't want to remind me of him. I don't really watch much television. It feels as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. Uh, you, you're, not, you're gonna hate it in 2023 then. <laughs> well, the father stopped them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Let's fuss. Now the comedy group is over, all the comedians are flocking to other genres. Well, I guess that's, that, that hasn't changed a bit. The alcohol seems really popular at the moment. Look at all these paranormal specials. Okay. How are you? The, the ticking seems so loud, it just goes to show how quiet it is. Michio Shioishi, a same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping, committed suicide last week. What that means? 
Mr. Joe, don't you was terrified of someone who already died? Is that what he meant by a curse? I can't work this out on my own. Maybe Victor will know. Why would he call? Oh, I haven't left it off the hook, have I? I'm waiting for Victor to contact me, but he hasn't. I made sure the receiver's on the hook. The ring as soon as he calls. Ah! It must be him. Hello, Sigma residents. How are you, Sigma? 2 a.m. Come back at the village. Victor called me out to meet him, and we came here to come out at the bridge. Victor, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. I haven't saved him in a while. Uh, here. Standing around is the last thing I want to be doing right now. This is my only chance to bring back my son. I can't afford to fritter it away. Okay, so look up here and there's another one. Uh, there's usually only one per uh, scene. And actually, you, you can only get it in Victor's route. Um, yeah, how, how is it? It's technically how it's route. Yeah, you, you can only get it on this route. And I think the last one we haven't gotten to yet. Those are the only two you can get the Mockingbirds on, so... Uh, okay, at least... Uh, yeah. Only on Huawei's route, you can get it. You might be able... You might get one or two on... Uh, the final route? Uh, Tetsuo's route. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm trying to hide it from you. You saw the name before. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, we have this one. Pink Punisher. The Pink Princess. <laughs> uh, I might actually do a an Ace Attorney stream. That might be good. We're on, on Kumagata Bridge over the Sumida River. There's a highway on the other on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. Another game I was thinking of streaming is Fate. Uh, Fate's Day Night, uh, it is, but it might be a little long. I might have, want to say that before after I go to NS. And I don't think I said it on stream before, but I act, my NS has been postponed, I'm uh, not sure why. So I have more time to stream than and, uh, for now. But maybe once I come back, I'll start streaming uh, Fate's Day Night, because it's going to be a very long series. Okay, uh, there's nothing. Okay, I need to read that. He's gazing, gazing down at the water. What does he see down there, I wonder? There should be the river. The water is filthy and horrid, but at night? When it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumida River what you haunt your folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Right, should have guessed. This was where they found him after he went missing. All alone, floating in that horrible water. All I can think is how scared he must have been. How cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? I've come here every day since then. And I pray to the river to give him back. To give me back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed the rivers marked where our world met, met the next. 
So the, the act of crossing the flowing water had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Like when Edo was founded, the people of Cho saw, saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife, as the place would later become Honcho. All the fears and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then the real Goku Fridge sprang up after the Great Fire of Meiraki, Mei and just like that, Honjo was part of the city too. And as it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with river ca canals and waterways. Windows to prevent flooding, that's what I was told. Uh, sorry about that, my mom just came in to wish me good night. They were, but that's not all they were for. The other purpose was to contain all the corruption that had built up on the far shore, and stop it leaking through to the outside of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one too. So, if I have this right... I can say that Honjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife. Exactly, that's why the right of resurrection is here, rather than anywhere else. I'm sure of it. And it's probably why the seven mysteries and the persons have survived to the modern day. And I guess that would make this spot we're standing on, which we're standing now, right over the water, the border between life and death. And there was ever place where bringing back the dead might be possible. I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned playing to the river. It might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? It's thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm. Well, it's a nice thought. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Did you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It must have been about 20 years now, when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy and it stank. You can look out all over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating. And one day, among all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. What? It was almost a miracle when you stopped to think about it. Why were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognizable? And then although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, who never staff would have an identifiable scar. And that they could tell it had been murder for the blade marks on the bone. Wait, are you talking about the Nijima murders? So you've heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. But the notorious case from two, over two decades ago involved the murder of a female high school student. The first came to the attention of the authorities when part of a human, human left hand was discovered floating in the Sumina River. Testing revealed it belonged to a missing female high school student. As it appeared to have been severed deliberately, the police launched a murder investigation. A large scale search of the river was organized, but the highly polluted state of the water made this impossible. Visibility was poor, the stench was intense, and the divers quickly fell ill. He succeeded in recovering only the victim's head and what appeared to be part of her leg before the search was called off. 
At the time of the incident, the speed of the river was as polluted as it had ever been, and it just faced no selfish could survive in it, eventually causing the annual fest fireworks festival to be called off indefinitely. Over the course of the search, the police discovered a number of unidentified human bones. This caused a stir among the public as several other young women had gone missing in recent years in the Tokyo area, and it was feared that they may have fallen victim to the same fate. Forensics technology at the time, however, was not advanced enough to determine the identities of the head of the deceased, and so the police were unable to open any inquiries. Due to the overwhelming evidence, lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation kicked ground, ground to a halt until a hitherto unrelated individual came to his attention. During the questioning about a se separate incident, Fumichi Kanejima, a 36 year old soft owner with no relation to the victim, divulged the details about her that had never been released to the general public. An investigation into his background was conducted leading to his arrest. Nijima testified that he had snatched his victim from the street and confined her in the underground storeroom of his shop, which also served as his living quarters. He chose her for no special reason, but simply decided that she was an opportune target on seeing her walking home at night. After keeping her locked for several days, he restrained her, showed her mouth shut, and severed her fingers and toes from a box cutter while she was still alive, conscious. As she screamed silently behind her sealed lips, he proceeded to her wrist, her ankles, her elbows, her knees, working his way inward slowly and methodically. His victim constantly wavered in and out of consciousness. Her ordeal continued until she died of blood loss. Nijima dismembered the rest of her body and disposed of it behind his home in the Sumida River before cleaning his storeroom and returning to his everyday routine as if nothing had happened. The brutality of his actions shocked the nation when they were eventually reported. Once apprehended, Nijima readily divorced the details of the murder but was less willing to, to explain his motive. When asked, he would only break down in tears, saying, I don't know what came over me, I, I know it was wrong. In the end, police could extract nothing more from him than expresses of remorse. Although the efficiency of his methods strongly suggested that he had committed several similar crimes in his past, no corroborating evidence ever came to light. Nishi was, was sentenced to life in, in prison at his first hearing. The sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendant. And yeah, that was a lot to read. <laughs> Fumichi Kanejima, the man who made headlines over two decades ago as the perpetrator of the brutal killings known as the Nejima murders. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos just parting around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sunk to the bottom of the river. They even combed, they combed the riverbed, but they only found, ever found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flown out to sea. Afterwards, I heard that the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. A, so a, a sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny, everyone figures the river's filthy already, so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I wouldn't want to go rooting around down there myself. That's right, which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. Times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. You see, back then, if you chopped the body up into the tiny pieces and threw it in the river, it would rot quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom, never to be seen again. Are you seeing what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after, when she got Nejima. The man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered the same way. The police never found any evidence of other murders in the end. But the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder. 
that seeing fog spread through everyone's mind and they started to avoid this area. So really, this river has been ranked with corruption for decades now. Or at least, that's how it seemed to be. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness lurking beneath the surface, there's no reason you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Nijma murders. But how could I not? After all, I was the one who found the hand. The police actually wrote me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Nijma to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Huh. I guess it just wasn't the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. The Sumida River, I have nothing but awful memories of it. You know, Sumida River actually reminds me a lot of the Singapore River. Like, it also used to be dirty. I don't know if any murder ever took place in it. Uh, I Anyone ever disposed the bodies in it? Yeah, they probably have. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it does remind me of it. Yeah. You know, I don't remember much of, about it other than the fact that it used to be dirty. Uh, I guess I could research it and maybe talk about it more in another stream. But for right now, let's just continue on. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well... That girl, Michio Shuaisi. The one who was with Tsuichi on the day of the kidnapping. That's her, well... She's dead. She's... what? The student who committed suicide last week. That was her. I heard something like that had happened. Never got the name though. Talk about bad luck. He finally let her get a lead, only to find it turned into a little dead end. Unless, the death was the reason Jodoshi was so taken up. He said he was going to curse she was going to curse him. Was she talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? He seems her back when we started. Not necessarily, their teacher knows something, I'm sure of it. But at the very least I put my Money on him having something to do with Miss Shimaichi's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And it's also, Sati tells me he knows more about her son's kidnapping. In any case, I think I found a good idea of what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. A hunch. Well, more of a theory. A victor's theory! Thanks for hiring me, Miss, Miss Shigama. Ah. I don't even get that reference. Care to take a guess? I can't say for certain, but... He's not going to too. What if Mr. Jono she challenged Mishio Shimaishi with blackmail? What do you think? Exactly my thinking. Jonoji knew about Miss Shiraishi's connection to the kidnapping. And he used that to blackmail her into doing his bidding. He made her feel so trapped she took her own life to escape. That's my read on it. How despicable. Well, it's just a theory. Uh, please, shut up already. Okay. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Jonoji. Please, go ahead. Alright then. I've been poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries looking for curse bearers, and I think I found a few candidates. First, the tall man I ran into in Kinsey Bowie Park. I asked him for directions, tried to prove him around, prove him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. And he was out there of there the second he figured out I wasn't what he was looking for. 
I got sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bearer. And then this middle-aged guy I saw on South Wauwikasui Street. There's no question about this one, he had one of the curse stones in his hand. He had a nervous air about him too. I swear he was up to some shady business. Gathering souls to act like that, he'd make a good target. Next up is a pair, a young man and woman I saw around the vehicle to bridge. This time, the, the man came up to me and asked me to find out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they love their there often, looking for kindred spirits with him I guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul drags in a group might be a decent idea if you could make it work, but with things being how they are, it's got to be hard to find folks one can trust. You got glass though, I don't know what that deal is, but I'd like to find out. Last is two detectives I've seen sniffing around. The police are involved. Not necessarily, her body turned up in the local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Maybe it was a curse that did the guy in. And if they're sending in the detectives from the head office, then something's got to be up. How do you know where they're from? Let's just say that when you're in this business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. I found all of them in so little time. I really did hire the best. It's all in the name, ma'am. Victor Kai, P.I. No, wait. Make that Victor Kai, Investigator. Extraordinaire. Uh, my, an investigator extraordinaire. Is that why you get dressed like that without drawing attention to yourself? You bet. An investigator extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. Well, that aside, the middle-aged man and the young couple sound the most promising, am I right? Whatever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. It looks seems like the curse bearers are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus, there's, there's still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more while he starts throwing out, that will get the pot nice and hot. And once, once it's boiling, our charge will come. Honestly, one of the best part of the game is just turning around because like it's very easy for the game to just jump scare you like that. And normally I'm not a big fan of jump scares, but like doing it this way actually makes it a lot better since it's very suspenseful, <laughs> not knowing if you know, if something's going to show up when you turn the camera. Is something wrong? Not really, it just fucked me. It's been 20 years since the nature of our murders. So it has. Not to spook you or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Hmm? Life in prison doesn't always mean life. There's precedent for first time offenders being allowed out on control, well, on parole after 20 years. Only if they are found to show remorse and a desire to reform themselves, of course. That's right, I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to reintegrate into society. I hear they've been trying to fix that recently, matching in range with jobs and accommodations. Oh, really? Keep an eye on them, they keep an eye on them, of course, and make them report in for regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the image records a secret from everyone but the employers. They even give no particularly notorious criminals new identities so they won't be recognized in their workplace. My. The way you put it, it's, it's like you're saying if Fumichika Nijima could be out on parole right now. Back in society under a new name, with nobody and need a wiser. Actually, it's me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Ah, yeah. ah, damn it. It's possible. As it happens, a little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few months back. 
I don't know if that was nature, but our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How are the settling? Now that you mention it, I just remembered something too. What was it? I was promising to go back out of high school a little while ago when I saw someone. A janitor, I think, and I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumichika Nijima. Oh. He looked a little different after 20 years. Much sooner than I remember too. I told myself I was just seeing things. Or perhaps... Perhaps it was him, after all. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the curse bell is up to. Luckily, the Sumina River is a good distance from any of the seven mysteries. It's unlikely the other curse bells will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. Alright. Yeah, you can't really move any further. I mean, well, in Huawei, but you actually have the means to move further in this, this node. Uh, first, I need to get a drink of water. I'll be right back. Okay, well, back down in this time. <sighs> now then, let's continue on with you. Resume. Stop the school grounds. Okay. Uh, what are you doing, miss? Eh? You shouldn't be out here this late. Don't you know what time it is? Oh, Mr. Asin... Yeah, actually, I don't need to, to read all this out again. Okay. Let's take a look. You and you. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Okay. Huh. Not acting out. What about you? Should you be smoking on school ground? Ah, it ain't lit, so it's all right. But it's, you know, an accessory. Hey, don't go changing the subject. It's just no letting my car down with you. So, why are you here so late? Okay, this one was blacked out a moment ago, so let's click this one. Oh, right, Mr. Genoti was actually looking for you inside the main building. What's that? Is he right now? What's he thinking? I don't know, he was in class 3B on the second floor just a bit ago. Well, I suppose that means I can't be locking up yet. Second floor, you say? Now I'll go take a peek. Be back in Jeff. 
Um, my house is really close by. I'll be fine on my own, really. That's so. Ah, the snacks are bad. Suppose you'll be fine then. Be careful now. Yeah, yeah. Stay on the big welded streets. If something happens, out fire. Okay, you worry too much. Well, we wouldn't want to be losing any more students. Though I imagine you'd be be you'd know that better than anyone. Yes, they are right. We got the high school front gates. Okay, hopefully Shogo isn't here to kill me. <laughs> Mio's late. I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. Huh? There's someone coming down the road. That's... Holy... Holy crap, it's John Fon. Oh no, teacher, it's Mr. Hawaii. Hideki is a historian who works part-time as a curator at the local folk museum. I think that's... Okay, what was... I don't know if I can do a John Horn impression. Um... Uh... And I probably shouldn't call Try. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say... Do a voice, but I knew it didn't sound anything like him. Uh, Hideki is a historian who, who works part-time as a curator at the local folk museums and as a teacher at Komatata High School. His recent publication on the right of resurrection has caused a stir in occult circles. Actually, that's pretty close to what I usually give him. He usually he looks on edge. Oh, I wonder what he's doing. Huh? That thing in Mr. Iwaisi's hand. Can't be. Whoa! Could that be a curse stone? Oh, this is bad. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I don't think anything good came up from him seeing me. Wait, he's the one who discovered the right of resurrection. It wouldn't be strange for, at all for him to have something to do with the curses. Then, could the curse echo from before have belonged to him? Ah! Did he notice me? Oh, hello, Yako. What are you doing here? Uh, that was fast. Did you not hear me? What are you doing here? I, um... Waiting for someone? I'm waiting for someone. In the middle of the night, I'm disappointed in you. Bad children do get into trouble at night need to be punished. It's a special night tonight, did you know that? A special night? Oh, because of the Feast of Shadows? Oh ho! Oh. Well, you know a lot. Did you hear about it from someone who... No, it's just a rumor that's been going around. <laughs> no, there's no such rumor. Aha, it must be that transfer student. She has it, you know. You must as well. Take out what's in your pocket and sew it to me. But, um, it's... Ah, stop it! I knew it. I see you have one. Um, it's not... That Nets that Netsuke is of great historical importance to the area. But it's dangerous to speak here. Why don't you come with me? This is important. Ah, that hurt! Stop! You're hurting me, Mr. Awaisi! Stop pulling me! Ah, fire! There's a huge fire! Just stop that, someone will come! Damn it, get over here! Ah! Uh, where am I? It's completely dark! What's the meaning of this, Mr. Awaisi? Ah! Ah! What? what? Stop! I hurt something! Ah! 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 Yaku Sakazaki deceased. 
Hello there, yeah, Nato. You seem to have arrived at a less than favourable result. However, this was bound to happen. It would be difficult for Yako to escape from from Araisi while well, he's in possession of a curse stone. Please come here again if things will change. In the meantime, this song remains as incomplete until we meet again. So yeah, this one has quite a number of game overs. And there's really nothing you can do at this point, so there's only one round left. But I think I'll save it for next time. It's getting a bit it's getting late and I think this is actually a good spot to end things here. So next time on Paranormal Slide, right, we're going to be dumping it to Tenso Susumi's uh nodes. And learning if we can get past these two nodes as well. Let's see what else is there to say? Um uh, Actually, yeah, that's not much to say. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be streaming Plants vs Zombies, so I'm um, looking forward to that as well. So this, so I'm going to call it quits here. Uh, see you guys next time. This is Nato Gias signing out. Bye bye.